Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Moo ICT. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to randomly spawn objects on the form and have a player object uh, move and collect those when they collide. Okay, so let's take a look how this project works. So as you can see right now, we have some blocks spawning in the scene. I can move the player with up, down, left, right arrows. And then as soon as I collide with another object, I am able to collect it and it will be removed from the form. Okay, these objects are spawning with a, a random color attached to them. So we're going to be uh, generating a random color and then we'll attach it to the uh, picture boxes as well. So let's get started on making this project. First, create a new project. In this case, we're going to pick Windows Form.NET Framework. Click Next. Name this project Spawn Objects Randomly in the Form Move ICT. Click Create. Okay, so this is the empty form. So now we just need to add a couple of components to it. So first, let's change the text of the form to Spawn Objects Randomly in the form. Okay, so now from the toolbox, drag and drop a timer to the form, name the timer game timer, set enable to true, and set the interval to 20. Okay, now go to the events menu, type in timer event, and press enter. This will add an event to the timer object. Let's go back to the design view, go to toolbox, drag and drop a picture box. So this is going to be the player. We're just going to make it smaller. I'll just place in the middle of the form there. Uh, go back to the properties and we can set, set the color of this one to black. So it's visible on the form. And let's change the name of this one to player. Now back to the toolbox, add a label. This is going to be the item counter label. So we're just going to pull this one, LBL items count. Okay, press enter, go to, uh, down to the font. Let's make the font slightly bigger so we can say 12 bold. Go to the text, say items zero. Uh, these are the UI that we need. So if you click on the form, not on an object, go to the events. Let's find the key key down and key up event. So inside the key down, type in key is down, press enter. All right, let's go back to the design view. Type in key is up for key up event. And press enter. So now we have our three events that we need. Okay, let's start by adding some variables here. So these are going to be public variables. So first, a, we're going to create a list of picture boxes called items, and then say equals to new list, and then do the small brackets and the semicolon. Then we're going to create a random number generator called rand. Let's uh, create a x and y integer, uh, and their player speed integer. So this is going to control how fast the player is moving. And we're also going to do a spawn time. So how often we want to spawn the other picture boxes to the form. Okay, let's create a new color array called new color. And inside of this one, uh, we can declare a few different colors that we want. So we can say color.red, color.turquoise, gold, and line green okay and what we will be able to do is we'll be able to pick a random color from this now let's create the booleans for the directions so we go go up go down go left and go right okay so we're declaring them in a group because they're all the same data type okay so now let's go and make a new function private void make picture box do the small brackets and then do the two curly brackets so this function every time this run runs it will create a new picture box let's do the key is down function so inside of here say if e dot key code equals equals 
keys dot left. Okay, we're going to turn go left to true. Let's do another one for e dot e dot key code equals equals keys dot right. Then we can say go right to true. If e dot key code equals equals keys dot up. So then we can change the up boolean to true. And we're going to do the same for the down key as well. Down, then set the go down to true. Okay, so this is the key is down function. The key is up is going to be exactly the same, only in reverse. So we're still going to be checking for the same keys. What we'll do is copy and paste that over, just the if for is statements to the key is up. And then change the uh, go left, go right, go up, go down to false. Okay, so the, sh uh, the player should move only when the key is down, but when the key is released, uh, the player should stop. Okay, so in the timer event, we're going to start doing the player movement. Let's do a small comment here. Okay, so let's do the player movement. So we say if go left is true, then we can say player.left minus equals player speed. Okay, then if go right is true, say player.left plus equals play speed okay and then if say go up this one is going to be player dot top because we're going to be moving the player up and down so that's going to be minus equals player speed if you go down then you can say player dot top plus equals player speed Do the semicolon there. Okay, so this is going to be the end of the player movement. So let's try running this, see if the player movements are working. So the player's there, so press, press the arrow keys. Okay, so the player movement is working. So now we can move on to the next bit. So now let's link the label to the items. So we're going to say items lbl item dot count dot text is equals to items inside the quotation outside of you say plus items dot count. So this will return uh, all the items that we have saved inside the items. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce one from the spawn time. So every time the timer ticks, it will reduce one. And then what we'll say is if spawn time is less than one. So when he reduces from 20 to zero, we're going to run the make picture box function. And then we'll reset the spawn time back to 20. Okay. So now let's do the make picture box function. So I'll create a picture box, call a new pick and then do a new picture box type say new pick dot height and set that to 30 new pick dot width set that to 30 as well so we set the back color of the picture box equals to new color that's, that's the array that we created earlier okay do the square brackets next to it so we can have access to the index of the array and now instead of here, we're going to say rand.next. So we're going to generate a random number between zero and the length of the array, right? So whichever number it generates, you will assign that color to the picture box. So now let's generate a value for the X and Y positions for the picture box. So we're going to say rand.next. Uh, this time we want the minimum number to be 10 and the maximum number to be this dot client size dot width and then we also want to reduce the picture boxes width from there as well do the same for the y value so this time it's going to be client size dot height and then minus new pick dot height as well do the semicolon end of the line okay let's now we're going to link this x and y to the location of the picture box so we're going to say new point and then inside the new point we're going to say x comma y and then semicolon okay now add that new picture box to to the list 
and also add it to the form. Okay, so with that done, we should be able to test out if it's going to spawn it on the scene. Okay, so as you can see right now that different items are being spawned with different colors. Okay, and we can still move the player picture box around. So at the moment it doesn't have any logic for the collision between the picture boxes. So that's the bit that we need to add next. Okay, so back in the timer, so we're going to say collision between the picture box and items picture box. So for here, let's do a for each loop. So this is going to loop through all the picture boxes that we have available inside of the program. So it's a for each. If you just double tap, Visual Studio will complete it for you. So first part is going to be picture box because that's the data type that we're after. Leave the items as it is, and then we're going to look through for so a picture box item we're going to search through in the items list okay so if the player bounds to intersect with insert the other bracket we're going to say item dot bounds with item is a type of picture box so it does have a bound property on it right and so what we're going to say here first is we're going to remove it from the items picture box so say item and then we also need to remove it from the form Okay, I think that the spelling here just needs to, it needs to be item, not items. Okay, so that's about what we need to do for the collision, really. So if you start the game now, so as you can see, it's, uh, items are spawning on the scene again. Okay, let's go and collect a few. So as soon as I hit some of them, they will be removed from the scene. Okay. Okay. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this tutorial uh, and I will see you on the next one.